All right, guys, Weld With Me Live is just a couple of weeks away. So this episode is gonna be about getting everything set up, what we're doing, what we're going with, and all the rest of that good stuff. And then toward the end of the episode, for you guys that are just new to welding or never take welded aluminum before or anything like that, we've got some beginner level exercises that you should be able to execute in order to have a better chance at following along with this. So if you're one of the experienced people, this may not really be for you, but feel free to stick around, check them out, and well, of course, make sure you can do that. Now, as mentioned before, Weld With Me Live is a 100% completely free TFS TIG welding class brought to you guys in your home, your garage, your shop, wherever it is that you are, where you can tune in and you can even follow along uh, with the lesson as we're doing it. Now you can provide your own metal or you can go for the alternative route here which is pick up the aluminum TIG welding starter kit from weldmetalsonline.com. This is what we will be using in the class and uh, or at least live as we're going along so it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow along if you have exactly what we have there because we may just call out for you know grab a 16th uh, coupon and grab an 8th inch coupon and let's weld thick to thin right so that way you have everything Thing there at the ready and it's all labeled it's ready to go straight out of the box the bag it's good so if you haven't picked that one up yet or you're contemplating on the fence whatever or maybe you just need a little extra to practice with before and after you need to get your butt over to weldmetalsonline.com right now pick up that aluminum tig welding starter kit maybe a few extra coupons use my code tfs10 for a discount on it so to get you guys up to speed, we're going to need to cover some of the settings that I'm going to have in my machine as we are welding, or at least the ones that I'm going to use to present this class to you. Now, I recommend using these if you know nothing about settings. If you have your own settings, go ahead and dial those into your machine wherever you want. But if you know nothing about it, not sure where to start, you can pretty much just copy and paste these into your machine. So the machine that we're going to be using for this is going to be the Prime Weld TIG 225 ACDC. That's the one that we're going to feature in this class and use. The reason I chose it is because it is probably one of the most popular TIG welding machines out there. Highly recommended by yours truly. And I know a lot of people are going to be using it who are participating in this class. So that's why I chose it. If you don't have a Prime Weld TIG 225, all you need to do is copy these settings over and your machine will only need only require about 120, 130 amps output and uh, it needs to have AC on it. So we're not teaching DC welding here, we're teaching AC. So first and foremost, make sure that your machine is set on AC. On the prime weld, it's that little switch, right? Let's see, two, sw or two switches over from the amperage readout or for the current readout. Uh, make sure it's set to AC. Your frequency, if you like your own personal preference of frequency, dial that in wherever you like it, but I'm gonna be running at 120 hertz. That's gonna be one of the best settings for generally everything that you ever weld. So frequency at 120, balance on this machine is going to be at 30%. If you have a negative reference machine like a Miller or a Lincoln, I think they're negative reference and a handful of other ones, uh, make sure that you're in the 70% range. Our balance is gonna be in the 30-70 ratio. So 30% positive to 70% negative. If you're unsure of what balance is and stuff like that, we've got a video all about AC balance that should make all that make sense. But we're going to be in the 3070 range. If you think that that's a little bit too low for your machine, you can move in blocks of five, but don't go over 60-40, right? So 40% positive is 60% negative. Don't go over that range. Stay within 30 to 40% positive and 70 to 60% negative or 67% negative. Again, if that doesn't make sense, check out the AC balance video. Start current and upslope, this machine has it, but we're not even gonna use it. You can turn all those all the way down. That's for 2T and 4T operations. And in this class, we're gonna be using our foot pedal. So don't even worry about those if you have it. If you know 2T and 4T operations and you will be using a switch in the classes you're following along, you should already know how to set those up and how they work. And if you don't, I have a couple of videos on welding with the switch. I'll make sure that we link those down in the, uh, down in the description. Welding current, we need to be running somewhere between 110 and 115 amps to start out with. We will be going back and forth and adjusting it during the class, but 110 to 115 amps on just about every single machine will weld eighth inch aluminum just like that. If not, you can go up to 120, but as you go through these exercises, you'll be able to figure out if your machine does or doesn't do it. So uh, that's where it's gonna start at. I'll probably be on, me realistically, I'm probably gonna be about 130 to 140 amps on my machine, but for most people, 110 to 115, you guys will be set all day long and be able to keep up and run with this. Downslope and end current on this machine, again, we're not using them. You don't need that unless your machine requires it and you should know if it, if it does or doesn't on your machine. Pre-flow, if you have it, we're gonna be at a half second. It's nice to have that little extra cushion of argon before the arc strikes, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Base current and all the pulse controls. Now, we're not using pulse. 
This, uh, the prime weld, the pulse uh, trigger, or the pulse on switch is over on the right. Make sure that's flipped down. If you are one of those that can't live without pulse, turn that sucker off. We're gonna teach you how to run without it, which is actually the best way to go. So no pulse, no settings, don't even worry about those. And your post flow needs to be somewhere between five and 10 seconds. Um, I would probably suggest somewhere around seven to 10 or so like that. And it's just to keep your tungsten shielded as you move the torch around after the arc is stopped because we don't want to contaminate the tungsten. Hard arc starts are really a pain in the butt, especially if you're trying to keep up. So make sure that your post flow is a little bit higher, seven to 10 seconds or so, we should be set. Also got to make sure torch goes in negative, clamp goes in positive. If you've never you know, done this before, whatever the case is, torch negative, clamp positive. It never ever changes on any single machine out there. Doesn't matter if you're welding AC, doesn't matter if you weld DC. We do not flip our leads. We don't do any of that stuff. Torch negative, clamp positive, every machine. There's your settings. Make sure you got them dialed in. If you know nothing about settings, that's what I'm gonna be using. If you know your own, put them on your machine. Next up will be the torch setup. I am going to be using the Stubby Aluminum TIG Torch Kit from Weld Metals Online. This is a standard number five cup, a Stubby collet, or collet body and a stubby collet, uh, wedge collet from CK Worldwide. And it's also using 330 second laser tungsten. This will be the exact setup I have. You can use whatever you like, but this is the one that I recommend. Just to let you know how to put your torch together, screw your back cap in just lightly. Don't send it in all the way or whatever. Generally speaking, if you can see your O-ring, you're good to go. Throw your collet into the collet body, just like that. And we're gonna send this all the way up into the torch to where it stops, okay? And we're gonna send our tungsten in, pointy side out, and just get this down and snug. Doesn't, we don't have to wrench it down or nothing like that. Don't crank it, just snug. Throw the number five on there, get this up into there nice and tight, and then we'll loosen this, set our tungsten to roughly a quarter inch or so of stick out, about six millimeters-ish, and then tighten it down. Don't wrench it down, don't crank it, if, especially if you have a wedge collet instead of the standard collet body, you just want it snug. All you want is the tungsten not to fall out or push itself in. So just snug, that's all you need. Torch is set up, let's go turn on the argon. As mentioned, we only use 100% argon. We are not gonna use argon helium mix. We are not gonna use 100% helium. Good luck getting it if you haven't priced it out lately. Uh, we're not gonna use nitrogen. You can't use nitrogen. We're not using argon CO2 like we do in MIG welding. You can't use argon CO2. So the gas, 100% argon, that's it. 100% argon. Did I say it enough times? 100% argon is the gas that we're gonna be using now. If you are using the same setup that I have here, which is the number five standard uh, cup, Make sure that you set the gas flow meter on your our argon regulator. Make sure you set it up to 10 to 15 CFH. You do not need more than 15 CFH. So don't exceed that number because yes, it does start to cause problems when you get into the very high flow rates like that. We're all gonna be using CK Worldwide laser tungsten in 330 second diameter. I recommend at least 330 second or 2.4 millimeter diameter if you're not gonna use CK Worldwide laser tungsten or if you're gonna use whatever, but make sure it's at least 332nd or 2.4 millimeter in diameter because uh, that's you're going to need that for the little bit higher amp stuff. Now I recommend that you have a pile of tungsten sitting next to you for the class that's at the ready so that way you can simply switch it out instead of having to run off and sharpen it while we're still teaching. So uh, if you have let's say in the aluminum starter kit it comes with a piece of tungsten. If you have the consumable kit it also comes with a piece of tungsten. If you cut them down into three those two pieces become six pieces and you can have them at, at your side ready to roll. If you get a pack of 10, that's 30 pieces you can have sharpened up and ready to roll. So if you contaminate your tungsten, if you mess it up, if something goes wrong, whatever the case is, it's a lot faster if you have a pile next to you that you can just switch about and keep on going instead of having to run to the sharpener. So now that we got all the settings and everything else like that covered, let's get ourselves over to the garage and let's get some of those beginner exercises knocked out so you guys can follow along. <laughs> 